Alrighty, in this video, I'm going to go through a complete example of the process of using state space analysis to analyze step response, the step response of circuits involving more than, in, the, in this case, more than two reactive elements. In this case, we've got three reactive elements, a capacitor C1, another capacitor C2, and then an inductor R sub L. In the state space approach, we need to go, first of all, identify what the state space variables are. The state variables, of course, they are the voltage across the capacitor. I've notated it here as V1, another variable here, V2, and finally, the current through the inductor is the third um, state variable. So I'm just going to go ahead and identify the state vector X. It consists of three rows. The first row will be the V1 row. V2 row and I. And by doing so, this then identifies the order of, of um, the matrices that we'll be developing as we, as we move forward here. All righty. Um, our first, the first step then is to, now that we've identified our variables, the first step is to go through and identify three different differential terms. In other words, we've got to come up with expressions, state equations for differentials of each of the three state variables. So we're going to be looking for a dv1 dt state equation, a, leave ourselves some room here, a dv2 dt equation, and a di dt equation. And we're looking for something that says um, dv1 dt is equal to some other stuff, whatever it is. The allowable variables are the state variables. And then, of course, the parameters r's, l's, c's, the voltage source, v sub g. Now, we know that the derivative of the capacitor's voltage is proportional to the current, or to put it, put it another way, the current through a capacitor is proportional to the derivative of its voltage. So we're looking at expressions that involve dv dt, which means that we need to be looking for things involving the current associated with each of these two capacitors. And we also know that the voltage is proportional to the derivative of the inductor's current. So when it comes to the, the uh, coming up with an expression for di dt, we'll be looking for ways to use the voltage across the inductor. So let's just go ahead and get started here. Um, we can take them in the order that they come. That may not be the easiest. Let's, in fact, let's just start to, to demonstrate what we're trying to do. Let's come up with an expression for di dt. We know that the voltage across the inductor is equal to L di dt. And so we look for a loop that we can go around and write a loop equation or possibly a node equation. But since we're talking about voltages, let's look first for a loop equation that will allow us to write or a loop that will allow us to write a loop equation that consists only of the state variables, V1, V2, and I sub L, and any of the circuit parameters. If you think about it for just a second, we can go around this loop right here, voltage across C2, that capacitor is one of our state variables. The voltage across R sub L will just be I, which is the inductor current, a state variable, times R sub L. And then the voltage across the inductor is V, D, L, D, T. So let's just go ahead and write it. Starting here, we'll have uh, negative V2. So starting right here, going minus to plus negative V2, coming on around, going in the direction of current flow. Um, going in the direction of going in the direction of current flow, we've got um, plus I sub L times R sub L. And then the voltage across the inductor is L times D I sub L DT. And the three of those terms has to equal zero. So we've got here a first order differential with, and the equation itself has nothing other than the state variables and the circuit parameters. So we can go ahead and solve this for D I sub L DT by bringing these other two terms over to the other side and uh, dividing by L. And we get then that di sub l dt is equal to v2 minus i sub l r sub l. And then, of course, the whole thing needs to be divided by 
L. So we'll divide that by L and we'll divide that by L to give us dI dt. Alrighty, um, now we need to come up with two equations, one for each of the other two variables. So, um, currents have, or uh, capacitor, the derivatives of the derivatives of capacitor voltages are related to current. So let's see if we can't possibly get another equation by looking at this node right here and writing a node equation. And we're going to have to do it in terms of the state variables and the circuit parameters. So let's just go ahead and start writing that node equation, realizing that the voltage at this node is already denoted as V2, one of our state variables. That's pretty convenient such that we can write an expression for the current leaving the node going in this direction. It would just be V2 minus V sub G over R sub G. So this equation here starts out with a V2 minus V sub G divided by R sub G. And then the current leaving this node going down in this way is the voltage on this side of the resistor minus the voltage on that side of the resistor divided by the resistance or that will be plus V2 minus V1 over R1. Now the current leaving the node going down this direction, because the capacitor is all by itself, all we need is that differential expression for the current, or the current leaving that node going down there is going to be C2 dV2 dt. And then the current leaving the node going in that direction is just our state variable I sub L. So plus I sub L equals zero. And once again, a little bit of uh, algebra can clean this up to where we solve for this term right there. And we have then dV2 dt is equal to one over C2 times one over R1 minus one over R sub G minus 1 over R1 C2 V2 um, minus, that's a minus sign, minus I, and then we have plus V sub G over R sub G C2. Now I'll let you go ahead and stop the video and you go through and just do the algebra and make sure that I didn't make any mistakes there. And so this then gives us the second equation. Let's just draw squares around these so we can keep them straight. There's one of the equations. There's the other one. So now all that's missing is an equation involving the first order differential dv1 dt. So this one starts to maybe get a little bit trickier because we might be looking for currents. I mean, obviously dv dt is proportional to the current. But we've already written whatever node equations were available. So now we start looking for expressions or equations that will involve the current through this capacitor, which is C dV dt, C1 dV1 dt, and state variables and circuit parameters. And you can look over here and you say, well, you know, there's a loop here we could do. The trouble with that is it's got this resistive term here. We'd have to work to get a current term for that R sub G if we wanted to sum the voltage across there. So that's certainly potential, but might be just a little, um, maybe, maybe more work than, but let's just look and see if there isn't something a little more straightforward. We could do here going around this loop, keeping in mind that the current through here is just C1 dV1 dt, we could come along here, on over here, and down. The trouble with that is I don't have a way of expressing the voltage across the inductor other than to introduce the dI dt term there. And I don't want a dI dt term in this equation. I want only the differential of the voltage. Well, there's one more option that if we were to go around this center loop with a KVL, and it turns out that that works, starting here at this point and going um, in the clockwise direction, we'll have negative V1. Now, the current C1 dV1 dt would be positive going in that direction, but we're going in the opposite direction, so let's just put a minus 
R1 times C1 dV1 dt, there's our differential term we're looking for, plus V2, now coming back around here, gives us our third equation. And we can clean that up, and we get then that um, dV1 dt is equal to V2 minus V1 divided by R1 C1. Once again, I'll encourage you to, uh, to stop the video and just go through and make sure I didn't make any algebra mistakes there. So we now have the three equations for each of these, and we could go ahead and we could write it then as, um, we can write it as a matrix. In fact, I guess let's just go ahead and do it. We could say then that the differential matrix, um, let's see what I want to call it, x dot, which is, which is equal to, um, of course there's plenty of room here, dv1, dt1, dv2, dt, and that's not t1, that's just dt, and the final one here is di sub l dt. is equal to, I can really leave my, room, myself some room here, it's going to be V1 minus, v, or V2 minus V1, V2 minus V1 over R1 C1. The second term, and that's the only term that's in there, so it has both V1 and V2 terms. The uh, next term here, and I left off, coming back here, I left off a V1 term there. So the second equation, dV2 dt, we can write it in here as 1 over C2 times 1 over R1 minus 1 over R sub G V1. minus 1 over R1C2 V2 minus I plus V sub G over R2C2. And then the final one, the DI sub LDT is equal to um, V2 over L minus I sub L, R sub L, over L. And that then concludes the, um, the state equations, and all that's left is for us to establish the initial conditions, which we're going to write in the form of an initial conditions vector x0. And that's going to equal... the initial value of V1, the initial value of V2, and the initial value of V3. So coming back up here to the circuit, the idea here is that V sub G is going to be switching from some initial voltage, call it V sub A, to some final voltage, V sub B. And that switching takes place at T equals zero. So for T less than zero, we'll have V sub G equaling V sub A. And it's been in that state for a long time so that all things have stopped changing. It's, it's basically static. It's come to some steady state condition. So the voltage V1 will be constant. Therefore, there will be no current going through the capacitor. Similarly for V2, in both instances, these two will effectively be short circuits, leaving the only path for current to flow will be through this outer loop. Now, the inductor will have also, the, the current in the inductor will have also stabilized so that di dt is zero, and this will be a short circuit. So we end up with rg and r sub l in series with each other, 
And by inspection, we can note that the voltage across C2 and the voltage across C1 will be the same. They'll be the same because there'll be no current going through R1. There'll be no voltage drop across there. So both V1 or C1 and C2 will charge up to the same voltage. We can determine that voltage using a voltage divider. And uh, let's just go ahead and write it right here. The initial voltage for V1 and V2 is going to be V sub A, the voltage before the switching, times R sub L over R sub G plus R sub L. And it's going to be the same thing for V2, V sub A times R sub L over R sub G plus R sub L. And the current is again going to be the steady state current going through R G and R sub L. So that's going to be V sub A divided by R sub G plus R sub L. And what I'm going to be looking and what I'm going to be looking for on the test will be a description of the state vari the state vec state variable vector, the x dot vector, or equivalently those three equations, and then the initial conditions vector. Once you've got this to this point, it's now ready to put into our numerical solver. We're using ODE45 in MATLAB to do that. And this is all set up ready for that.